Okay, so we're recording and we're to end this record. Um, I think everyone here is familiar with the kind of conflicts that happen in our workplace. So does would anyone like to share just examples that you can think of in our workplace? Feel free to unmute and speak. Yes, Terrific. Yeah, just as usual, just to break the silence, let me start uh, just as a brainstorming. Uh, in the workplace, when we say the conflict, uh, there are a couple of conflict, like uh, conflict of interest, uh, for example, it's commonly uh, observed in the, in, the, in the work area. So the other are conflict between the uh, subordinates and the bosses or with the uh, with, with the third person like it's because of the work activities like because of the unbalancing of the workload among the uh, beneficiaries and also with the colleagues there is uh, conflict and also conflict in the uh, areas like uh, in the disaster, disaster of areas, if there is any uh, distribution, like uh, uh, non-food items or food items and so on, because of this distribution, there will be conflict among the beneficiaries. Uh, this is also uh, another type of conflict. So yeah, these are just two mentions and just over to you. Yeah, those are really great examples. And um, I think it's, or at least each and every one of us has maybe been through a conflict in their workplace. Um, so yeah, you've given really good examples. And I think maybe just to add a few. Um, so for example, lack of recognition. This is probably a situation where you've done, um, where maybe a member of the team has done great contributions or achievements, and then it doesn't go noticed, um, or yeah, when it doesn't go noticed or appreciated by other colleagues or supervisors, um, one can maybe feel a bit undervalued or demotivated um yeah so it that's one example another one is interdependence conflict which which arises when there's a disagreement or like tension between individuals or teams um who probably rely on each other to complete a certain task or even just achieve a common goal and then there could be like differing opinions between both of them. Maybe this one wants to follow this method, the other one wants to follow this other approach, or it could be one has a much higher expectation for this other person in terms of the role they're supposed to do as opposed to the other one. And this can really lead to, um, yeah, it can lead to like the breakdown in collaboration between the two of the team members um yeah those are just some of the examples the other one is workload imbalance so this is probably just a situation where one feels like they're given much more tasks uh, or one may feel overburdened with excessive work and the other ones may feel like they have lighter workloads um, so this kind of imbalance can create, can kind of reduce productivity since uh, someone who's overloaded with work can feel, can, can feel some kind of resentment, resentment um, and sometimes can be perceived as like unfair treatment. So if you're a manager, uh, it's important to just get that feedback to ensure that everyone in the workplace feels like the work they're given is um enough for them and not they're not being overworked um the other thing could be um undefined roles 
and responsibilities and this can be a very dangerous thing because if if a team is working without a proper uh, documentation of who does who someone can come and do this other job because they like it more and in so two 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 people may work on one task without each without knowing and then you have the other task which is probably the hardest that no one wants to touch um so it's very important again if you're a project manager to have a proper documentation and clear communication of the roles and responsibilities between each and every uh member of the team just to ensure that there's that clarity and between team members before they go forward to continue their work. Another example is interpersonal conflict and this is just disagreement or mis misunderstandings or just tensions between individuals in the workplace. And um, this could come from very many it could come from different it could come from it could be yeah it could come from different reasons um for example maybe this two people have like different personalities and they kind of have a personality clash um it could be uh the values that uh different people have in our work in our work environment um, so if you tend to support things that your colleague doesn't support, that could kind of bring in some conflict if you talk about it or bring it up. Um, it could also be just of communication issues. Um, yeah, it could come from different things, but it can impact the teamwork in a way, uh, the productivity of the team and even just the morale. These are a few examples. Uh, Tarefe has given us many more examples and there's still many more that we haven't covered here, but it's important to understand that this, um, uh, this kind of conflicts are very common in our workplace. And if you're not aware of them before and kind of find ways to mitigate it early, it can, kind of ruin that cohesion between the team members. So it's very important for organizations as well as um, project managers to make sure that they address these issues uh, just so that they can maintain a very positive work environment and kind of promote that collaboration between employees and everyone in the team can feel satisfied and good and happy to work um yeah so those are just some of the examples um so let's go back to zero so when we when we talk about uh conflict especially in a work environment um like we said it's it's a very normal thing for it to happen just as part of day-to-day -day human interaction and relationships, uh, these things are very normal and they can kind of arise from people differing, uh, having different opinions or needs or even goals. And when conflict is managed constructively, um, it can lead to positive outcomes and growth. Um, however, if they are mishandled, it can cause harm and even just strain the whole team um, teamwork uh, in the organization or in the office. Um, so yeah, like we said, conflicts are very natural uh, in any relationship. Uh, so, and it can also be personal or professional, uh, but that just shows that every individual has their own perspectives or values, but it doesn't mean that um, you, it, it doesn't mean that it cannot be handled well. It should be handled in a very respectful and a very positive way, just to ensure that there's growth. And we're going to talk about the different ways in which we can handle uh, or we can practice conflict resolution 
in a workplace. Um, so yeah, if so, yeah. Uh, again, it's really important to understand how to uh, properly manage this, uh, how to manage conflict when it arises. Um, it should be handled in a very positive and respectful way. Um, so there's there are different ways in which uh, you can approach conflict resolution. Um, so if you're thinking of how to properly manage it in a respectful way, um, this could involve things like maybe actively listening. It could involve things like practicing empathy. Uh, we're going to talk about them in depth. And even just uh, having that willingness to find a common ground between two people. So uh, if you go into a conflict resolution with the with a very, um, how do I call it? Um, with a very fixed uh, attitude that you know you're not wrong, even though you're even though you know you're not wrong, it's always good to uh, go into this conflict resolution with an open mind and also um, having that willingness to find a common ground between both of you because you want things to work out uh, well for you and the company um so in terms of uh, mismanaging um, conflict uh, this could involve or this could arise from things like uh, the very basic one that is just avoiding that the issue exists the issue exists but it takes you days weeks or even months to just bring up the issue itself um, so avoiding the issue is not is one way of mismanaging uh, conflict and also if you try to um, address this conflict in a very aggressive manner so um, that could also bring some more aggressiveness between both the team members which is not good um, yeah and the other one is also before uh, the thing that comes with avoiding the issue is uh, failing to communicate between them that there is this issue that I've noticed so if you don't communicate well uh, it's somehow like it's kind of you avoiding the issue which could eventually harm uh, the team the teamwork between all of them and uh, yeah so other things that could arise when you mismanage uh, conflict is it could lead to some kind of resentment from the different team members um, so you'd find one person doesn't want to work with the other person because they're in a conflict that hasn't ever been solved before and that could not be very good for your project if you're trying to make it work uh, the other thing could be the lack of trust between two different employees um, if you don't handle the issue well uh that that kind that trust kind of fades off and ultimately just um it could harm the relationship so it's very important to uh embrace conflict as a normal part of relationships uh, whether personal or professional and try to um yeah try to also manage it effectively and we're going to look at ways some of the ways we can um so this this is all just for the goal of building healthy and more resilient um teamworks team um yeah again it's important to when when approaching conflict to uh to approach them with an open mind and a willingness to learn and resolve that conflict. So if you're not willing to resolve that conflict, it could be very hard to even um, to even do the mediations. And uh, it's also good to ultimately commit to um, finding ways that can uh, that are mutually beneficial to each other or like uh, mutually beneficial solutions to each and every one. Um, so that's some conflict. Um, 
So uh, one of the reasons, one of the ways we've said, um, one of the ways we've said uh, how to mismanage conflict is if you don't communicate the problem in the first place. Um, so, and aside from just communication, um, there's more to communication. Uh, so when you communicate the problem, it's not really fully solved. There's more to communicating the problem. Um, so yes, communication can be one of the issues that can contribute to conflicts, uh, but they're not really the, the cause or the underlying cause of the conflict. Um, most often, this kind of conflicts arise from um, deep underlying um, differences in values, like we mentioned, uh, or even just perspectives. Um, so, yes, you can improve the problem. That could be a part. You could improve the communication, and that could be just um, one one issue solved. Uh, but the goal is to try to um, kind of address the root cause of the whole conflict. Like, where did we all? Where Where did we start? Where did this um, con Where did this problem stem from uh, in the beginning? Um, so yeah. Um, Yeah, so um, like so. Yeah, so when communicating, uh, well, you can train your employees or the members of your team to kind of communicate well and do anger management classes. Uh, they could be beneficial in certain solutions, but they're not like they they won't solve the whole problem. So um, there are sometimes programs that are uh, that often uh, this are just like so communication training and anger management uh, classes. This are just um, uh, on surface on surface level skills uh, that really don't address the underlying causes of conflict. Um, so uh, if you if you decide to resolve your um, conflict issues on the team by either sending your or giving training on communication or just how to manage your anger well, that could not really be sustainable in the end. So for you to effectively, uh, con uh, for you to effectively resolve a conflict, it uh, requires you to understand exactly what is the underlying issue within the team or the organization. Um, so it could be things like having an open dialogue or just actively listening to uh, different sides, both sides of the team. And again, that willingness to find that, find mutually benefiting solutions between uh, all. Um, so yeah, successful conflict resolution depends on your ability to uh, number one to manage stress. So it's very important, and I know we've mentioned this sometime before again. So it's important to stay calm and composed when you're uh, during conflict. So if, yes, sometimes this conflict can kind of um, spike your anger and you become more aggressive, but that's not how to effectively manage this kind of stress. It could bring a really bad um, rapport to your, it could bring a bad rapport to yourself. So uh, even though uh, this can, even though this conflict can spike your anger, it's important to remain calm, number one, and uh, approach the situation with um, with a calm and clear mind. Um, the other thing to consider is to control your emotions and behavior. 
and that's really crucial it doesn't mean um uh it so it just means like not letting that anger or frustration take over but instead um expressing your feelings in a very respectful and a very constructive manner and this can help create a positive environment just for you to resolve that conflict so um and you could use different words for example um uh, i think we're going to look at that in we're going to look at that uh but just before you get into conflict resolution these are just some of the things you have to keep in mind and the other thing is to also pay attention to your feelings and the feelings that are being expressed by you by your other um let me say opponent and this is also in line with having that empathy um so it's very important to kind of listen and understand the emotions expressed by others so i know as humans um sometimes we tend to mostly just think about um ourselves how we're feeling but we tend to forget about how others may also feel by things that we've done or yeah or certain situations so it's important to just pay attention to their concerns or their fears or even just the needs and it's very important to um acknowledge their feelings um i keep saying we're all humans and we go through this but it's important to kind of find uh, to cultivate that very um healthy environment if you want to continue with your team for the next um 10 years or more uh, it's very important to uh yeah to ensure that you're that you you you're creating that kind of um a healthy work environment for each and every one and this can help you avoid employees or team members quitting in between pro program uh, projects or um yeah uh in between projects or yeah or even just uh, an employee quitting uh, so the other thing is to um res to be aware of the differences that exist so these are my values that i stand for and these are the values that you stand for can we find a common ground and um appreciate not appreciate like acknowledge okay i understand this is your value and this is mine so can we find like a common ground so it's important to respect the differences between uh you remember not everyone can be you not everyone can follow your values and what you stand for and it's very important to also understand that everyone's values are different and um that's okay so in as much as especially if you're working with uh different cultures so um you'd find that some cultures are a very different so uh just a weird random um example is how the western culture has really embraced uh, the lgbtq but mostly in africa you can find it's not really embraced so if you find yourself working with someone who like has um whose values in that whose stand on that um doesn't really work are you going doesn't really match are you going to um how exactly are you going to uh kind of um find a common ground to work together and sometimes it's um sometimes you don't really need to find a common ground if you see that uh sometimes uh, there are people who would value their values more and cannot stand with other other people's values so they would feel the need to quit or just stay away from such environments which is also okay uh but it's important to uh not react or let anger or frustration take over in such a situation um so yeah generally just by managing um 
your stress and controlling your emotions and paying attention to feelings that are being expressed and respecting uh, the differences that exist, you can kind of find uh, an effective way to navigate conflicts and work towards positive resolutions. Um, so with that, we're going to look at um, some different approaches to resolving the conflict. So Did someone speak? Sorry, it's a mistake. Okay, all right, no worries. Okay, so yeah, we're going to look at the different approaches that we can have uh, or that we can employ when managing conflict between team members or even between ourselves. So we have the win-win approach and we also have the appropriate ass assertiveness approach. And then we also have the cooperative power and then empathy. And yeah, yeah, I think those four that we're going to look at. Um, yeah, so the win-win approach is one of the conflict resolutions the approaches that is uh it's a great strategy that kind of aims to find a solution that benefits all the parties involved so making sure that everyone can at least um uh every 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 party can uh kind of find a mutual uh benefit from the solution and some of the key values that are that you need to have when uh, considering this approach is uh, ensure that there's that cooperation between everyone else. So ensuring that everyone works together cooperatively. It's it's just about finding a common ground uh, to understand each other's needs in the first place. Um, so when you cooperate, you kind of create a positive and supportive environment for um conflict and then the other value that needs to be had is um the ability to just recognize the differences between uh between the two of you so this is your stand um for example um if maybe you're starting a company and then you're not agreeing exactly on the number of shares uh that you have so you kind of um yeah so you kind of recognize yeah the differences between you so i feel like i have done this much and i and you you feel like you have done this much so uh it's important to also recognize that kind of differences between all um and that could be in terms of like uh appreciating uh, each other's viewpoints and then find creative solutions that could consider everyone's interests um, but yeah it's important to be very much aware and recognize the differences that exist and also respect each and everyone's decisions um, yeah so the other one is to be very open to adapting your position in the light in the light of shared information and attitude so this could be just um being very flexible so not being rigid remember it's a conflict resolution so you are not agreeing on things so it doesn't mean you're going to get a hundred percent but can i be comfortable with getting 70 percent at least from this um so it's good to be open and kind of be open to um be open to yeah be open to being flexible about um what you stand for um uh, yeah okay uh, not really what you stand for it's good to stand on your values um but yeah so things like 
uh, you don't want this, you want this. Uh, it's important to be very be flexible to um, to kind of uh, I'm losing a word to explain it. Um, yeah, just being flexible and instead of you uh, hoping and being very rigid on getting 100% of it, you can kind of um, be comfortable or work with 70% because then you're considering this other person too, so not just yourself. And remember teamwork is one of the really great um, ways for teams to succeed. If your team doesn't work well together, that could be a really big problem and you might have to change again and get a whole new team uh, just for your uh, just for just for your company or your team to stay intact uh, but also remember that uh, the more the more your team stays on the more your team stays with you with all the experience and with all the practices they've had working for you or in that team that could be really beneficial than getting a new a whole new team um another example that i could give here is in terms of like um salary negotiation or when you're paying projects so um Yes, you could have a budget that you're working on for a company, but if this other person doesn't feel well compensated, can you be at least um, flexible enough to uh, either go, go or reduce or find other ways that you can kind of compensate this other person? Um, yeah, and then the other thing is to attack the problem and not the people. So instead of blaming and attacking each other, focus on exactly what's the issue at hand. So um, yeah, this kind of addresses the problem directly. So I'm thinking of an example to give here. Mm. Yeah, so let's, let's give an example of um, two team members who one feels overworked and the other one uh, feels like uh, the other one doesn't feel uh, so overworked. So uh, when someone feels overworked, they might kind of start being resentful to the other person and uh, not communicating properly. So if you send, if so person A has less work, person B is overworked. So if person A sends uh, something to person B saying, um, maybe just, oh, when is this thing due? There, there could be some kind of resentment from person B. And since he's a bit mad and not communicating about it, he might not communicate well to this other person. So instead of attacking this other person who's not aware that, this other person is being overworked, it's important to understand exactly what is the underlying reason. And that could be, um, I feel like I'm overworked. So you would need to, communication will be the other thing, but you as a person B, would you be able to understand why exactly am I feeling this kind of resentment to this other person? Um, yeah, that's just an example of attacking the problem and, not the people, or you could have some kind of resentment towards your manager because they gave you more work than the other person. So instead of feeling resentment towards this manager, um, you need to understand the underlying cause, which is uh, you feeling overworked. Once you've understood the underlying cause, it's important to then communicate after. Um, yeah, so this is just one of the approaches that can kind of help to resolve conflicts and the kind the kind of help to build stronger relationships and find uh, benefits that everyone involved that benefits that everyone can feel um, well compensated. Um, so if you see, it's kind of uh, it has like a positive 
and uh, effective way to resolve conflicts. Mm, and you can also use this for either personal or workplace um, approaches. Um, so the other type of approach could be the appropriate assertiveness. Um, so yeah, just let me, I feel like I need to explain um, what assertiveness is in the first place. So from, from my Google search, assertiveness is the quality of being self-assured and confident without being aggressive. Um, yeah, without being aggressive to defend a right or a point of view or a relevant uh, or a relevant statement. Yeah, so it's the quality of being self-assured and very confident without being aggressive to defend a right point of view or a relevant statement. Um, so this can be correct. Assertiveness can be characterized by um, maybe confidently declare, de confident declaration or affirmation statements. Uh, so it kind of, it's like you're standing on your right uh, or how you feel and being very confident about it. So instead of being shy to express how you're feeling, um, it's important to be very affirmative. So if you, so for, let's, if you go back to the same example of someone feeling overworked, so some people may feel shy to kind of express um, that they're being overworked. So they'll just stay with the problem because they're afraid uh, the manager can either fire them or um, something. Um, but instead, uh, they could, if they could use, uh, if they were being assertive, if, you're, if they were being assertive enough, they would um, kind of affirm that, uh, for example, uh, they could find better ways to communicate uh, this kind of problem. So it could be, I need more support with this project. Uh, instead of saying, you guys are giving me way too much work, I cannot handle. If you uh, say things like, I need more support with this project, especially in this and this area, that could be a better way of expressing how you're feeling with the work. Um, with a work overload um so yeah for the appropriate assertiveness or the i statement you could start with stating what you need so um this kind of helps you to clearly express your own needs and concerns so uh it's also very important or it helps when the other person understands exactly what you want or what's important for you. Again, if you don't con if you don't communicate uh, your issues, uh, no one will know that there is an under there is there is an issue here. So it's important to uh, first communicate by stating what you need, and then uh, the other the the second thing would be letting the other person know uh, how you're feeling strongly about the issue. Um, so this could just be like expressing your feelings. So after saying I need more support to this project, um, expressing your feelings could help you communicate exactly how you feel about an issue. So it's more important to express your emotions um, in a very honest and respectful way. Um, so for example, you might say, um, I feel frustrated when my ideas are not considered. That could show your manager or your team members that you're feeling undervalued in as much as you're putting in that much effort, you're still feeling undervalued. Or it could be, um, maybe I need more support for this project because I feel like I am being uh, overloaded with 
work or you could find a better way to uh, say it that I can think of now. Um, but yeah, it's important to also express what you're feeling. Um, yeah, I was thinking of, uh, yeah, yeah, that could be uh, that. And the other thing is your I statement should be very clear. So um, that's that still goes back to like, how do you effectively craft your messages or yeah, how do you effectively craft your messages to ensure that you, did, you relay the information that's actually needed um yeah so when it comes to your statement being clear it should be very uh straightforward and so not a lot not too many stories not too less information just the right amount and also very easy to understand um so avoid using big language so something that's not very clear and be very specific about the, your needs that you want from this expression. So uh, remember that you want help, you're feeling overwhelmed with all the work and you need some help. So it's important to be, um, so I'm, I'm thinking of maybe two examples of, um, so yeah, one person could say, um, one person could communicate it this way. Um, uh, the manager is not being very fair. He's giving me way too much work than I can handle and favoring the other person instead of uh, sharing the work equally. That's not a really good way to express it. Um, but instead, if you consider this other person, um, I need more support for this project, I feel very overwhelmed tackling this other project. Um, could, is there any other person from the team who can help uh, in this work? Um, yeah, that's um, sort of clear and straight to the point instead of using many, many other irrelevant words that could also spark some kind of anger or frustration from the other person. So remember, we're trying to not get anyone's anyone's stresses levels up or spike any kind of anger uh, with someone so it's important to be mindful and have some empathy when thinking um so the best i statements are free of expectations and so expectations or or demands so uh i statements mostly focus on expressing your own feelings and needs so what do i need how are you feeling uh, without trying to control or change the other person's behavior or um yeah behavior so it's just about finding a solution that works for both of you um if we go back to the other example of um maybe two co-founders or maybe just an employee who doesn't feel well um properly compensated um how exactly would you effectively communicate uh using a nice statement so um you could say something like i feel like it's not fair for me to get this and yet i have done this and this um yeah i can't think of it clearly but i'm sure you can find ways to properly craft your words well with the i statement um yeah so remember the whole goal is to effectively communicate how you're feeling and your thoughts and if you have a good manager they would probably understand i also understand that in reality and uh, not all managers could be um could be good um so yeah um so that's on the i statement there is the other approach which is on 
cooperative power and this could be this is a very powerful tool of resolving conflicts and um, yeah and also building that uh, cooperation or relation positive relationship between your team members so and there are simple steps or yes some steps um, yeah some steps steps for you to go through to go to use this approach is uh, number one ask very open questions uh, to reframe resistance um, so so when facing uh, some disagreements it's good to ask open-ended questions um, so open-ended questions, I think, they're the ones that don't end with a yes or no answer. So uh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll look for a better example. So it's important to ask open-ended questions to better understand the other person's perspective. So this could help reframe your situation and find common ground. An example, could be uh, what are your main concerns about this proposal instead of um, maybe do you like this proposal that could be a yes or a no answer that is close-ended question uh, so you could ask what are your main concerns about this proposal and this kind of gives uh, the your members of the team an open gives them an open uh, it yeah it doesn't really restrict their answers so it kind of leaves an open ground for discussion and suggestions and things and again it's really important to consider everyone's opinions um so after you have given after you've gotten some concerns it's good to find options uh, instead of focusing on the problem so it could be um, so if you could have like some concerns about this proposal being um, the time issue so you feel like they've put the project could take more than three months and it's too ambitious for you to say you could finish it in a month and that could give your employees more stress um, can you find options instead of focusing on the problem itself. So um, what other options could work? Can we extend the deadline? Will this be good for the client? Um, are we going to make any losses when we use this other options instead of this? Or if you feel like the deadline is really too tight on, and it has to really be done by that one month, can you get more members to work on that project um that could be on finding options and uh finding focusing on the problem and yeah just finding possible solutions to uh work together so it's important to brainstorm um and i know a good team always have brainstorming sessions and they allow everyone to freely express their needs and concerns and uh, this could create a win-win situation for everyone and if you're on the member the side of the members team it's also very important to kind of um, air out your concerns instead of being shy and suffering in silence um the other the next step would be to redirect and make the positive uh, and shift to the positive side. So um, instead of focusing from the negative aspects, think about uh, the positive things that could come from this uh, problem. So it's kind of redirecting the conversation from a negative thinking to, uh, to a more positive way of thinking. Um, yeah, so this is um, this is just the same as having an optimistic mindset, and 
an optimistic mindset would have that goal of resolving this solution very fast and now um instead of yeah uh yeah it's good to have that uh optimistic mindset to just make sure that all the decisions you're making are for you to reach this um this positive goal so instead of yeah instead of being very negative about oh we have this problem we don't know how you're going to solve it uh find options and uh use your team's uh powers also to kind of get to a solution and uh, the last step is to go back to legitimate needs and concerns so just throughout the process keep in mind the legitimate needs and concerns of all all ideas that were given by every member of the uh, team um, so this will just help you to ensure that the solution that is proposed um, addresses the needs and kind of finds a balance that works for everyone um yeah that's on cooperative power the last one is empathy and i think that's one of my favorite values to have in a workplace so it's it's really good or effective when you're trying to understand and connect to others during a uh, conflict resolution so for you to employ or practice empathy you have to be a good listener so that means you have to instead of just thinking about yourself and your needs you can actively listen to uh so you can like pay full attention to the person who is speaking and show your genuine interest and thoughts and also what you're feeling about the idea and it's always good when being an active listener it's always very good to avoid um, interrupting the other person and just focus on understanding exactly their perspective so this is an act of um, it's just an act of not being selfish so instead of thinking yourself uh you can also listen to others idea other people's ideas and it's a very good thing for um the team sorry just a minute Uh, yeah, so after being an active lis active listener, it's good to um, now seek information or gather more information just for just to clarify the point of view in case anything was vague and just for you to summarize. And then um, the other thing is to affirm or acknowledge their feelings and experiences and let them know that you understand and validate um, their information and then the last thing is on inflammation which is basically if the other person kind of complains or attacks uh, it's important to respond with empathy and understanding so avoid getting a bit defensive uh, instead just acknowledge their feelings and try to understand the root cause of their frustration. Uh, yeah, that's I think on empathy. So just some general quick tips. Um, so before engaging in a conflict resolution conversation, uh, it's important to clearly define your goals like what do you want from the conversation before having it so going into that meeting um well prepared knowing that this is what i stand for this is what i want this are some of the things that i can um i can compensate 
for and you have to be very clear on exactly what you're disagreeing it on and also try to see it from the other guy's perspective uh, so what exactly is his point of view what exactly are you disagreeing on and then the last one would be uh what's the most uh generous interpretation here so um just with the goal of aiming for a generous and empathetic interpretation of uh, their actions or views like um this is what they did um so so it's just a new um so, so from their side if you were on their shoes um how what exactly would you how would the how would it be if you were uh in their shoes so yeah finding that generous interpretation if you were on their shoes um yeah i think that's all so on I hope this was comprehensive enough. So for this week's challenge, it would just be on um, yeah, for this week's work, it's going to be um, some of the scenarios that could arise in our place. If you ever find yourself in this, how exactly would you would you handle the situation and you have like three or five five scenarios that you've been given just play around with exactly if you find yourself in the situation in the future how exactly would i handle it and if i if i already had this um if i had a similar experience previously how did i manage it and yeah as usual just either slides or a report and put it on a PDF. Um, anyone have any questions? I uh, yes, that is on me. All right. Good. Good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Good afternoon. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Um, and uh, it was actually an insightful moment. I enjoyed it the bit by bit uh, illustration that you did by the way i i was uh, i was expecting an invitation link and i i couldn't get one i have to go back to the schedule to see if actually we're having the 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 the, the class but I, when i saw the bit i the time and i thought maybe for just sending the career uh, career challenge is what it meant until I go through the link on this schedule. I never knew that uh, maybe that is a new development now. I never got any invitation link for that, for this uh, meeting. Uh, um, by the way, then the, the, the okay. Oh uh, yeah, please go on, sorry. Are you, uh, are you responding to that? Um, I, you can finish speaking and then I'll respond to it. Hello? Hello? Um, you can finish speaking and then I'll respond to all of them. All right, all right, yeah. yeah. So, okay, then the, the, my question about the, uh, the, the career challenge is the, the scenario. You know, we have like five scenario there and we were asked to to write in five reasons or five ways in approaching those uh, scenarios uh, and uh, present them in uh, 10 PowerPoint slides. My question is, uh, are we going to do all the five scenarios 
and preset in five uh, in ten PowerPoint slides, or we just choose one scenario and uh, and present the five reasons in ten PowerPoints, and that is that 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 is the that is the question. And for the for the submission link, uh, I would want to suggest that uh, if we can get it uh, open maybe before Friday, so that. Uh, some of us that are already ready to submit will submit before then because at times we we'll get it done and uh, on the day of submission there may be inches uh, challenges that we may fix uh, that uh, at the end of the day we we'll discover that uh, it did not meet up with the deadline it has, to, it has to be a late submission so that is that is my suggestion thank you okay um thanks for your concerns and questions so for the first one um i think for the career challenges we kind of paused on sending this to emails um since we have new trainees coming every week and sometimes we might miss an email or sometimes send emails to um, guys who left the program so that could be um, kind of annoying to their email so we kind of prefer to share it on slack um, so i hope you've seen the document on slack the drive shared on slack had to send me Okay, um, I think I just if you're speaking, you're on mute, but I've seen other reactions, so that means the others also saw it. Um, so, uh, yeah. so playing yeah. with the network, I, I didn't get, I didn't get that. Okay, um, so I said we are currently sharing the career documents on Slack. Did you get the link on all week nine? Yeah. Okay. Um, for the second question, uh, for the second question, um, I've seen some comments. I'll I'll come back to you, Larissa. Uh, for the second question, uh, you have to do all the five scenarios, um, just as described there. And then, um, so you have different scenarios and I think each and every question um, kind of is, yeah, each and every question comes from a different scenario. And in terms of the where to submit, it's, it, it's not a must you do it on slides. You can just write a report on, um, you can just write a normal report on, um, yeah, using your documents. Um, I hope I've covered all your questions, Adesani. Okay, he, he said uh, it, it, it's uh, it's not compulsory. Is being on a PowerPoint that can be just ordinary report on a Microsoft yeah. Word or what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it could be just a normal okay. report, but Thank just you. make sure it's uploaded as a PDF. And in terms of the submission link, I will have to talk to the 10X team and the project manager and request. About, um, about, about the link, yes. Yeah, about the link. And then once I get a feedback or update, I will make sure to update you on all week nine challenge, um, channel. Um, for Larissa, uh, you didn't get week eight challenge. Um, so let me just check here. If you go to uh, all week eight, 
it was shared on the Slack channel. But again, there's always this, all the documents and all the drives are, are always on one drive. Let me just, uh, let me just share that drive so you can always have it. Uh, yeah. So if you have, if you have this one drive here that I've pasted on the channel, you will never miss any any kind of uh, content. So it has everything from week, all the content from week one to 12. And then if you go to uh, week nine, you can see both the technical and the careers and same as on each and every, same as on each and every other week. So if you go to seven, technical and careers, everything. So I think the most important thing is to just have this one link. And one of the things you can do to make sure that you have it every single time is to, um, so there's, there's this option to organize and then you star. So every time you come to your Google Drive here, you can check your stad. Um, you can check your stad uh, drives, and then you can find your content too. So if you click this link, make sure you've stad it right now. So every time you come to Google Drive, you'll just come to stad, and you'll never miss any um, any content. But still, regardless, we'll still, we're still going to share it on Slack again. Um, Larissa, I hope that's clear. Um, Tarefe? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, maybe I have uh, one that's not uh, directly related to this uh, tutor, but it is almost uh, it's your concern, I think, regarding this uh, non-technical uh, submission, the results, especially most of the time when we submit on time, but uh, we are not getting the feedback uh, within the specified uh, time interval. Like, for example, in my case, I couldn't see your feedback of uh, week seven, the technical uh, submission. Actually, this morning I was reminding about this issue during the stand-up session. So uh, I want to make sure that uh, even the assignment is already with you or not, because I couldn't see the the result. That's my uh, my question as a reminder. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for your concern. I think uh, we're aware that week seven has not yet been uh, graded, but it's still in it's still in progress. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of being on time, we are going to try to also work on that. Uh, but yeah, I think no, no one. Uh, there's no one who has already been graded. Um, so if I think it's still in review. I think Tevin had also raised his hand. Um, my issue is also the same with Terefe, but we've already addressed it, so it's okay. Okay. Great. Uh, give me, Gabri, which link asks for permission? The one I've shared here, the drive. Yeah, sorry. The one you shared on the thing, it asks about permission. 
Okay, I think now, now it's updated for everyone. So a while ago, we would add all the emails here, but we noticed new new guys every week uh, was kind of hard. So I think check now. Okay, great. Um, any other questions or concerns? Okay, um, if there's no other question or concern, we can call it a meeting. I see we're 13 minutes past time. Um, thanks for being here and have an amazing and productive evening. Bye.